Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Gruver, and I'm here with Celia Bannenberg, and uh, she is from Barrington, New Hampshire, and has accomplished something with her organization, something very great there, and uh, I want to talk to you about that. Uh, Celia, I find found out recently, is a, uh, a midwife that specializes in home birth, and uh, she's on call, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, it, it could be that she'll be called away while we're talking here. Um, I'm in Colorado and I'm a, a member of the National Community Rights Network and also uh, locally here the Coloradans for Community Rights which is sponsoring a, a state ballot initiative uh, to amend the Colorado Constitution uh, to give uh, communities the right to local self-government. Um, also a, a member of East Boulder County United uh, and we are uh, defending the Lafayette Community Bill of Rights to ban fracking. Now I know I've said a lot of things here that may be unfamiliar to you and, and uh, during this conversation with Celia I hope we'll get these things all uh, cleared up and, and you'll definitely be interested in what we're doing. Welcome Celia. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time here. And uh, can you describe uh, a little bit about Barrington, New Hampshire? What kind of community you have there? Barrington, New Hampshire is an um, absolutely gorgeous town. Um, I moved here 34 years ago and moving from Amsterdam in the Netherlands from a big city into the sticks in the woods uh, <laughs> on, a, on the Isinglass River. And I've been in the same place all these years. We built, uh, my late husband and I built my own, our own house. And um, it's a small town uh, with seven, it has grown quite a bit. When I came here, it was like 2,500. Now it's like 7,000 inhabitants. And it's a large, um, large area. So there's a lot of land and a lot of beautiful woods and rivers and aquifers and uh, pristine, very pristine. And uh, particularly of importance, we'll be discussing a project that regarded the protection of the Isinglass River and surrounding aquifers. And can you uh, describe the Isinglass River? Yes, it's um, it's a fast uh, streaming river. It's uh, actually right now it's going really. It's like white water because we had a lot of rain this week, and. Um, and in the summer it dries up almost, but it is a protected river. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we find out it's really only protected for <laughs> slaughtering animals next to it and, and not much, much else. Right. Yeah. Is, is it considered a, um, you know, like, I forget what the designation is, but... Uh, yeah, the class uh, something. Some class. rivers are considered uh, completely wild, or I, I forget. Um, is it in that category? Is it? I don't really know. Okay, that. so uh, how does the Isinglass River um, relate to or communicate with the surrounding ecosystem? What role does it play? Is there any? Well, it, uh, um, it's about 15 miles uh, long, and, uh, or 90 miles, but 15 miles of it goes through. Barrington meanders right. through Barrington, and people use it for canoeing. They use it for fishing a lot. It's yeah. stocked, and um, we have swim holes. And um, it's uh, you know in the winter some areas you can skate on it, and um, you know it's just used by the community. There are many walks in areas along the river, um, so it's. Uh, a, a very famous river oh. to the residents. Yeah. Uh, do, do the wildlife, uh, are there a lot of wildlife around there? There's a lot of wildlife and there the, they're protected turtles and um, we have, yeah, we have deer, we have beavers, yeah. um, lots of, yeah, lots of wildlife. And uh, any particular unusual characteristic about the lay of the land or the, the, the vegetation in the area? Mostly all woods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I know New Hampshire is noted for its outdoor activity, and it uh, also attracts a lot of tourists from out yes. of state yeah. because of the beautiful natural environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and uh, so uh, there was a problem that the you know I understand the Isenglass River was slated to be invaded by some um, corporate. Um, yeah, that's how how this all started with right. us going for a um, community bill of rights. Um, it was about four years ago that I got a notice from the town and a butter's notice in the mail that across from us uh, they were gonna they were going for a permit for a gravel pit and uh -huh. their land it's like two hundred acres and it's right a, right along the the icing class river um, I, I talked to my neighbors uh, immediately. Actually, what I did right away was, um, because in the Butters letter it said when the planning board was meeting with the, the party to get the permit. And so I actually make, made up leaflets right away and I, I put them in people's mailboxes. Got into trouble for that because you're not supposed to do that. Um, I learned that. I didn't know that. But... Um, so a lot of people showed up at the meeting, but we were all convinced that they could not ha have a gravel pit there because they had tried that 25 years ago. Uh -huh. And they were shut down because um, it was zoned in a way where there were going to be a lot of conditions. And, um, and it actually went all the way to Superior Court. Mm -hmm. um, and the superior court judge said, no, you cannot have a gravel pit there because it will harm, um, you know, the safety and welfare of the people living there. And it will get their real estate value down. Right. So it was turned down. So getting this letter was confusing because, well, actually, we were all convinced we were, that's not going to happen because they can't. There's a uh, permanent injunction on the land. So we go to the meeting, come to find out that somehow in 2005, um, the zoning had changed and for that parcel of land, and, um, but nobody knew. We right. were never notified. We, we wound up going into the town hall find, asking for all the meeting minutes from 2004, 2005, leading up to that, because it was a change of master plan in 2005. And there were, we couldn't find anything, no discussions, right. except for one letter from the gravel pit owner to the planning board from, hey, help us out, we, we, we want to do something with the land. And then there was another letter attached to that piece of paper and that was missing. So we never found anything. Um, so now it was zoned in a way that the we couldn't put any conditions on. And we come to find out that they have a right, they have a right to a permit. Right. Even if the town, we were just flabbergasted, even if the town wouldn't want it there, the state can come in and preempt this. Right. And I didn't even know what the didn't know what the word preempt meant then. Well, you and do now. <laughs> you do now, and and so it's like this can't be possible. You know, the the town understands that it's not a good idea because they're going to be crushing, they're this, they're going to be dynamiting the area, um, and they had done that 25 years ago because they started operating and people had gotten cracks in their foundations. Yeah. And, uh, and so we said, it can't happen. Well, <laughs> long story short, they got their permit because the state says, no, they, if they comply with all the rules and regulations, they get their permit. So we went to every, we, we started the Isenglass Protection Committee. Yeah. And so 50 of us would show up at every meeting. They had to go into a big cafeteria every time. Um, we were able to put a lot of restrict, more restrictions on, um, like they would have to come and test our wells beforehand if they started the project, so that we could prove that our wells were working well if they started blasting. Because we have all granite here; it's all it's all related to each other. So. 
um, we could easily get our wells cracked and you know have contaminated water. So we wanted to. That was in in there, and some other things. They could only do um, thirty loads a day, so that's sixty trips. Now imagine this is a small country road, right. and we have down just a quarter mile from me. A, a bridge that's a one-way bridge over mm -hmm. the Icehouse River. So, so if 30 trips means 60 trucks. So I started counting right away. I was like, okay, that's uh, like one truck every eight minutes. Right. Eight, eight hours, you know. Yeah. And so, and then you, and it's steep down to that bridge. So uh -huh. you hear those jake breaks and and. Right. You know, we. My kids are grown now, but we had our kids biking on the road. We still have kids biking on the road. People walking. I walked them myself. There's horses. Well, that could not happen anymore. How many truck trips go down your road ordinarily without any gravel pit? Um, we have a lot of traffic, but mostly not trucks. So not many, many trucks at all. One a day? One a, mo a week? Uh, How's he, no, what maybe you five trucks. A, a week day, or so. A week, yeah. okay. Oh, a day. I'm not even sure, but yeah. not many. So not one many. every eight minutes would be a huge change in lifestyle. Oh, it would be. <laughs> it would be dangerous. Yeah. And then, and then you know, the, being right next to the icing glass, and we got the Conservation Commission involved, and they were really good. They were able to uh, get the setback uh, much further away, which is great. But, and also they got... Um, five acres set aside for the protected turtles <laughs> mm -hmm. and i said that's really nice but how do they know that they, <laughs> that's their area so who's going to police the turtles i mean they're going to go wherever they want and they are going to be you know run over their eggs are going to be run over by the trucks right. anyway so they got their permit took about a year uh -huh. um so these the the people that went for the permit, they wanted to sell the land with the permit to an operator, so they didn't want to operate it themselves. Um, but I'm I'm going a little ahead of myself right now. But um, yeah, so now you you worked and you actually delayed the permit process, so you postponed the destruction for one year. And yeah. then, and then there were some further evolutions with that permit and the the sale. Yeah, and of the I will permit. I'll come back to that a little later. Uh, but that going through that process is what um, we we said something needs to be done. This is so unfair to right. everybody on this road. I mean, it's not only the seventy four households on our road that are involved. But on the other side, we're right on the edge with Rochester, the city of Rochester, and, and there's a, a housing um, development, and, and they are very close to it too also, and that's another 40 houses. Yeah. So they even came to the meetings. Mm -hmm. and, um, so one, one, op one person can affect so many people, and that seemed so unfair. So then we were talking to somebody, or actually my fiance was talking to somebody, uh, Jim Conley. He and, she, and this woman told him that she had uh, heard about this uh, CELDEF, <laughs> Environmental Legal Defense Fund. We said, well, well, but what is that? And she said, well, I'll give you the name of Gail Darrell. And she is the New England representative, and you should really talk to her. So... Um, he called her right away and she called back and, and I talked to her and I was like, oh my gosh, so this, this is it. You need to help us. So then she came on board and that's when my, an hour learning curve just got, you know, just right. started blooming and, and she was just amazing. Just yeah. Amazing. yeah. And so she, uh, you know, it was so hard to, to follow her sometimes, but she said, well, first of all, you need to, um, we can't do, we can't stop this project because that's just the way the law is right now. And so we need to do something else. We need to pass an ordinance in your state, in your town, right. rights-based ordinance, where you have a little more self-government, where you can 
allow the projects in your town that you want there. And and it's not just up to the state and, and the corporations. So um, she, uh, she, she helped us to set up um, a warrant for a warrant article to ask the town if we wanted to um, actually write an ordinance to protect our waterways. Right. Yeah, so that was all just new to me. I've never been in politics, nothing, so I've never even been to deliberative sessions. So now we had to go to deliberative session, and Gail said, "Yeah, you just have to stand up and say what you're doing." And, and this was so early in the process. I, I was just, I didn't really even know what I was supposed to say, <laughs> and Gail couldn't be there, and so I, I had written something down, and then some questions came, and I couldn't even answer them, you know. Right. And then they wanted to change some wording in in the in the language of the warrant article, and. And then I, and I, I, I went to somebody that I knew that knew that something about it, and I said, "If they change it, can I still write an ordinance?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> you know, I just didn't know anything about it. So anyway, um, that got on the ballot. It got voted on, and people in Barrington wanted us to write about um, an, an ordinance uh -huh. to protect the ice and class river. So then it was still the ice and class river, but. As it started to, to get uh, more widely known, people said, well, what about my river? And what about that aquifer in Nottingham with USA Springs, where you might have heard about that, I don't know. But uh, you need to include us, too. So we said, yes, you're right. Yeah, tell us about USA Springs. Yeah, but so we, we changed our name from Icing Class Protection Committee. Uh -huh. The Barrington Waterways Protection Committee Good. to involve everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, USA Springs is um, it's happened. It started, I think, about fourteen to sixteen years ago, and this there's a, a huge aquifer in Barrington and Nottingham on the border. Nottingham mm -hmm. is t next town over, and there it was a company. USA Springs that wanted to take 430,000 gallons of water out right. every day mm -hmm. uh, and bottle it and send it to Italy or mm -hmm. sell it to Italy. So not even for us. Well, the both communities got up in arms and said, well, wait a minute, that's going to be a huge impact on our wells, on our, um, our wetlands, you name it. And and they were, again, faced by the same thing. The state said, if they comply by the rules and regulations, they will get, they have a right to yeah. a permit. Uh, they did a 10-day test. And they only took only, took 150,000 gallons of water out a day instead of 430. Mm -hmm. Within, it was supposed to be a 10-day test. Within a, a six days, the people's wells were down four feet. Right. And the wetlands were down two feet uh -huh. on, in only and in only six days. Not only that, there was a capped uh, old dump site in the area, and it released uh, contaminants into the aquifer. Yeah. So USA Springs says, oh, "Okay, well, we'll fix it." So they throw in some chemicals in the spring water right. aquifer, fix it, get the permit. <laughs> Put some chemicals in your. In your pristine water. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Then, um, so they got the permit, but the, then in the meantime, Nottingham got smart, and they mm -hmm. passed a water ordinance, one of those community bill of rights. Ah. Yes. And um, that, that, when that happened, and, and they presented that to USA Springs, they stopped building the, the big building they were building for this plant the structure there's only a, a steel structure there and and then they they were there was a lot of mismanagement actually it's still coming out and it's in the in the law lawsuits many lawsuits still now but they went bankrupt right. thank goodness for us um they went bankrupt and only uh, 2014 it came out of bankruptcy. So two years ago, 
and that was scary because then the they started trying to sell it again with a real estate company and I pulled up from the internet the way they're selling it and they're trying to sell it again as a water plant right. because the structure is still there. So, but Nottingham has already a, a community bill of rights there. We didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know that before, but now I knew. So we included that and in which was big. And um, so that so it just got bigger and bigger. Um, and that, that's how it really even Yeah. Now, um, so then you uh, got the Bill of Rights, and was that voted on in a town meeting? Well, so it didn't just happen like that. Um, so we, we wrote, with, or Saldev wrote um, the ordinance for us, and the next year we, um, we presented that with a warrant article again mm -hmm. to the town, and um, we went to the uh, selectmen's uh, meeting and asked them to accept it and they did not they were right. completely um, they were all against it and also the town manager and so that's what they're writing up also in the literature in the ward article lists you know unanimously the select board is unanimously against it and our lawyer says it's unenforceable and so People look at that, so it, you know. Yes. It, yeah. So, but we we didn't win it the first year. We didn't win it the second year. <laughs> yeah. And then just this year in 2016, so it's very fresh. Yeah. We finally got it through. Congratulations! It. So you Thanks. did a lot of uh, legwork, visiting we did a people, lot of leg work. giving talks. Yes, presenting we, yourself, circulating pamphlets, yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, we came up with this pamphlet. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was really gorgeous, um, and that that helped us a lot because, and that's actually Barrington, and the pink is actually where it says where the areas are open to gravel mining and commercial water extraction. So once people see that, mm -hmm. because almost all of it is. Is pink because where there's granite, there's gravel, there's water. Right. And um, the hardest, the hardest thing was to get the information out. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do this um, because I, I wrote for grants every year, and um, we have uh, this wonderful Negev. You may have heard of them. They're actually the New England uh, grassroots. Environmental fund. That's what it is. Oh, it's for, and they really good. they they help out so many project grassroots project mm -hmm. environmental projects all over New England, and they're fantastic. And um, so they gave us a thousand dollar grant for the last three years, and and I was able to to publish that yes. and send it to every household in Barrington, and because. That is the hardest. We we uh, we did a lot of potluck parties over the summers mm -hmm. at other in different areas of town, and but it's hard to get people to come if they don't know the people and or they're busy with you know the kids playing sports and um, there's always something and um, so then you there's no email list of every resident. I'm sure everybody runs into the same problem. Um, the last year, we actually, um, Barrington set up um, Barrington Connections and Barrington Beacon, two Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. and we have a Facebook page also, the, water, the Barrington Waterways Protection Committee. So between the three, we started posting things every time, which mm -hmm. it got out more and more. And... Um, it was great. Yeah, it was very exciting. Well, congratulations. <laughs> uh, this Thank is you. just amazing. And uh, so the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund met with you and helped you write your ordinance. And then yes. uh, you educated the public. And on the third year of introducing this for a vote, it was voted upon in a meeting where 
what the town people show up and they get to yay or nay this and no and it's we do it a little work? different and we do it a little differently um i i'm still amazed about how so many towns do it differently we um we have what is called usually the end of uh january or the beginning of february uh, called the deliberative session uh -huh. it's like a town meeting where the ordinances or the, the warrant articles are being discussed mm -hmm. and um, we're always at the bottom <laughs> the last one and this year we were at number 34 and so then I come up and I, I will speak to it yes. and um, and then the the town lawyer you know every three the three years in a row she will very friendly say well we um you know this is uh, not how our law works and <laughs> and you, you're trying to tell them well that's why we're trying to change it you know it's not a existing law and i can see it from her side it's but somehow um you know but people they they started to understand it uh, more and more as the years went by and we also so about the town meeting, I was going jumping. Um, so it's it's really kind of scary at first for me to speak at those town meetings, but I shouldn't be because it's all your town's people. But you know, some people are very against it, and I I'm like, why could they, why would they be against it? But you know, I guess it's politics, <laughs> and you have to have a, a bit of a thick skin. Um, but we just, uh, it has to go on the ballot. They, oh, they okay. took, uh, yeah, it has to go on the ballot, but they, so they tried to change the ordinance. Uh, they cannot take the intent out of it, supposedly, but now in the last two years, they, they have been taking out um, a section, um, the, 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 it's, hang on a second, it's called, um, I have a blank right now. It's the severability, the severability section. So, and they're smart because they realize the towns are really scared that somebody will take them to court yeah. on over this. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to explain to them that, well, what we have found in New Hampshire, where we have already 10 towns with an ordinance on the books, is that the, the companies will pass these towns by. They don't want to sue anybody. They don't want to, you know, they will find some other place. And that's what will happen in New Hampshire most of the time. So there's very little chance that the town will get sued. Well, the severability, what that does is, say for instance, we do go in front of a court because of some reason in the ordinance, um, maybe one part, if if um, if we would lose on that part, the rest of the ordinance would stand because yeah. of the severability clause. If now that it's taken out, if we if we go to court, we might very well win and it's no problem. If we lose, then the whole ordinance is thrown out. So did did this time did it was it removed this time? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it they, was. Okay, they want to yeah. do something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to put their hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, you're, you know, you're lucky there in New Hampshire that uh, these uh, community bills of rights are left alone by these corporations. Um, I know here in Colorado, uh, <clears throat> it's a different story with industries like fracking. Mm -hmm. And the local bands that have gone up against uh, fracking that have not been rights-based, uh, they've gone to court. Uh, Taken, taken those communities to court, the oil and gas industry. And, you know, up in the San Juan Mountains, we have a, a process called um, cyanide open pit heap leach gold mining, which uh, will kill your entire river. Like, wow. there won't be anything alive in your river once that leaks into your river. It's always leaking to a certain extent into the waterways. So you'll get heavy metals and cyanide, and, yeah. but the when there's a break and it's concentrated enough, then the whole river dies, and mm -hmm. uh, many communities wow. rely on those rivers for drinking water. Yeah. 
well, those bands were uh, preemptive. So, you know, you, you learn about preemption and you realize that, um, you know, we don't really live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can enact local laws. There are five counties, uh, Summit County and four neighboring counties that banned the practice. And then the state came in and preempted that. And uh, the, that gold mine technology is currently going on again. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so can you explain in a nutshell what a Community Bill of Rights looks like? In a nutshell. Um, well, it's, it's just a document, really. Okay. Uh, um, I don't and know it's rights-based. Can you explain what that means for us? Well, it, it fundamentally mm -hmm. changes the way the town handles uh, the state and federal regula regulatory procedures. And uh, it lays out a Bill of Rights, and, which includes the right to sustainable water, right. water use, and the right to clean air and water, mm -hmm. and, and to preserve the uh, aesthetic values of the town. Right. Yeah. And so, one of the things that we're doing here in ours is, uh, and I see uh, happening everywhere now, is that uh, the Community Bill of Rights uh, spells out not only the rights for the community, but the rights of nature. Uh, yes. of the natural environment which yeah. uh, in which the community is situated. Yeah. So, for instance, that river now has, uh, Isenglass River has rights. And uh, yeah. the, the, if, uh, if... And that it, was a big thing at the town meeting. Yeah. The lawyer would <laughs> say, <a> stretch. <laughs> yeah, n nature have rights. Nature doesn't have any rights. It's just <laughs> a thing. It's just yeah. a... You know, like uh, the the mining industry uh, said the same thing. They they looked at it and they said, "Oh, you mean uh, property?" Mm -hmm. It's like, "Oh, really?" So uh, nature is property, and it's owned. And uh, and what that would mean then is that if you own a lot of nature, then you can destroy a lot of nature. You mm -hmm. know. So the privatization of water is really what you were, one of the things you were objecting to there is um, these companies coming in and sucking your water out of your community and out of the nearby nature. And as far as I know, I mean, they're not even paying very much at all, maybe just a penny a, a, penny a gallon or who knows what they're paying, but it's not much, uh, you know, and you're left with uh, the pollution and the, yeah. And the destroyed nature and you know, people and getting people having no water. Yeah, it's really, you know, and that's permitted. You know, the state thinks that's fine. They're following the rules. Well, you find out that there really aren't too many rules, and they certainly don't protect the yeah. people in the local community and their and their surrounding nature, natural environment. So, yeah. very very fascinating. So. That's what we mean by rights-based is, you know, these fundamental inalienable rights to just the things that en enable us to live, yeah. you know, and nature has to live if we want to live. So um, if you destroy nature, then you basically destroy every living thing around. Absolutely. We're yeah. good at it. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, you know, so you accomplish something really great and, um, you know, I... I just think it's amazing. I think what you did, I mean, you're not a rebellious type, as I've observed. You're, you're, not, you're not the kind of person who was born to buck the system. You, no. you, you seem like someone who is just totally in harmony with their life and with those around you. And, uh, and uh, you certainly don't like to stick out. It, it doesn't appear that you particularly are... are, are um, the kind of person who likes to do public speaking or, mm -hmm. you know, probably didn't belong to the uh, thespian society and, and do acting in, in school. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> pretty quiet, gentle person. And, uh, and, and you, uh, basically, it looks to be like you appointed yourself the responsibility of uh, protecting your community. Yeah, it was so unjust. I, I couldn't stand it, you know, and, and with, we have a, a core group of five people that um, we accomplished this you know? yes. and 
it's amazing uh, and it's all grassroots and I knew we would um, because with with the midwifery um, we accomplished so much in New Hampshire also by going grassroots right. and yeah. and um, you know so I know it's it it can happen and you just need to it won't, won't happen right away right and you need to plug at it but uh, and not give up and I'm good at that <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 interesting thing is is that uh, when most people have a project like was happening to you, a corporate project like that, they don't think too much about the grassroots. You know, they 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 want to go to their state representatives. They want to write their senator and their congressman in in, in Washington. They want to try and yes. you know like get these big you know, get the central government to yeah. come to their rescue and not realize that the whole central government, the whole governmental legal system is set up for these projects to happen. You right. know, they're, you they're set up to the protect head. the corporations against the communities in which these projects are happening so that when they become outraged, uh, you know, and in fact, environmental groups are set up for that reason. And, and uh, you're kind of lucky you didn't get... Uh, approached by one of the big greens, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the nonprofit uh, industrial complex, which is there to help uh, facilitate the, uh, the, the current system, uh, to give you a sense that you have some, somewhere you can go to protest, you know, I but see. unfortunately the protest always ends up bringing you right back into the fold so that this, these yeah. projects get to go on anyway. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're lucky. You're, you're just like, you know, you were the perfect person for this. You know, you just uh, saw it, saw the job, and, and you did the job, and you stayed out of the misery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and Gail, she was just amazing, you know, yeah. in holding my hand, and I needed a lot of hand-holding. Yes. Yeah, she's a, she, she was a real blessing in Oh my goodness! We all yes. miss her. <laughs> yes, we sure do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this has been fantastic. Is there anything you would like to to say? I think that uh, I think in in from from my side, the final thing that I would like to put out there is that um, if we realize that we have uh, power as local communities, uh, the 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 local elected officials are all programmed, you know, by these. Um, municipal yeah. lawyers to follow the state rules and regulations and a lot of times those state rules and regulations are actually uh, in conflict with the actual state constitution itself mm -hmm. you know in New Hampshire there's a, a very strong tradition of, of self-government you know and, and it's right. only been live free or die <laughs> yeah it's only been yeah. recent times that you know the the federal government and the state governments have been really uh, crushing uh, these uh, practices of local democracy like mm -hmm. uh, like you have there and uh, so you know the, the the elected officials have a tendency to have a very limited view of uh, work at the grassroots community level but in the community rights movement we really generally view that there isn't much hope at these at the uh, federal and state levels for protecting mm -hmm. the environment yeah. and, and for protecting health, safety, and welfare of the people who live in these environments. Yeah. We, you know, we, we really see that it's at the local level that we can actually start um, yes. clarifying and, and, and declaring our inalienable rights, putting them into laws. They could be ordinances or charter amendments and then, you know, we we elect them democratically and and we stand by them and we yeah. enforce them. Yeah. So you know, um, one of the things we have here is when when our uh, ordinances, when our charter amendments get, uh, you know, in in when they get established by the community and we get sued, then we have to en enforce our our uh, laws. Our Mm -hmm. rights-based laws and what that means now is we're having to amend our state constitution we have a big state constitution amendment drive going on right now to get 150,000 wow. signatures uh, so if you know anybody in Colorado that would be interested in helping us out um, 
you know, I, I just want to give a plug to what we're doing here, and I hope you don't mind. Uh, it, no. You could go to coloradansforcommunityrights.org, and it will give you information on okay. that. And okay. do, does your organization have any contact information where, where people can find out more about you? Yeah, or, it's, yeah? it's on, uh, uh, on Facebook, okay. and it's the Barrington Waterways Protection Committee. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I wanted yeah. to add um, one more thing because um, where the gravel pit got their permit. So once we have in the ordinance that once uh, that permitted gravel pits uh, are in the exceptions, so they can they can keep doing what they have been doing, uh -huh. except that they never started. And right. in January of 2016, so just this year. They, their two-year permit needed to be extended. Uh -huh. But there were some conditions that written in their permit that said they had to have done at least, I think, uh, uh, a quarter of the, the work on, on, on infrastructure. Yeah. And we had, um, the town had put on them a condition that they had to improve the road because it's a country road and, and uh -huh. the trucks would demolish them. They had to put in like $400,000 to get the road up to par. So a quarter of that at least had to be spent in order for their mm -hmm. permit to get extended. Not only that, um, the, in a year in the town, we, in the meantime, in those three years, we have changed the the zoning on that piece of land back or for all permit for gravel pits um, for conditional use so uh, basically when we went to that meeting we got another a butter's letter in january in december and um, so i got the whole neighborhood to go again and so they they it turns out they didn't do any of the work right if they had done a quarter of the work, I think the town would have given them an extension. But since they didn't, and the zoning had changed, they said, and we all spoke up and said, hey, go by the rules, go by the rules. You, you change the zoning, you need to go by the rules. They haven't done what they should have done right. because their lawyer tried everything, of course. And they were denied. So, their, their so permit. they will have to start all over okay. again under the new zoning. So that and permit then on expired. Top of that, yeah. yeah, it expired. And then on top of that, we got the, the, the ordinance passed in March. And so we're just ecstatic. <laughs> well, it's a cause for great celebration, you know. Yes. And, and uh, it's, it, you know, it, it, the point we want to make uh, to the public is that, you know, it sounds like a legal strategy, but really it's really the the most refined form of civil disobedience because instead of just a handful of you, you know, chaining yourselves to the bulldozer or, or whatever and trying to, or laying down in the road to stop, you know, the, the Trucks. vehicle traffic, um, your entire community uh, disobeyed, you know? Yep. You basically disobeyed the, the current system of law and said that, you know, this is not acceptable to us. This is a violation of our inalienable rights, yeah. and we're just not going to have it. Yeah. And uh, so uh, these possibilities exist everywhere in every community around the nation. So if, if anyone yeah. wants to do this kind of work, uh, they can contact us at the National Community Rights Network org. Uh, Celia, they can contact you and you can forward them to us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that uh, we think really needs to happen everywhere because, um, yeah. you know, trying to get your congressman and your president and your governor and your, you know, whatever to do something is, is uh, mm -mm. practically impossible now because of the corporate sponsorship of uh, our entire governmental legal system. Uh, the economy is set up for this. And so uh, if you disobey this way at the local community level, then you might be able to really be do, doing something great like this to, to really protect nature and, and protect your, your community uh, from serious harm. Yes. Well, 
that's great. Uh, thank well, you. Thank you so much for this time, and and it's really great hearing your story, and uh, I hope I get to meet you sometime near near nearby in the future. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Celia. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>